In this video I'm going to take these chips which I scavenged from this uh, battery acid covered Amiga 500 RAM expansion and I'm going to put them into this stock Amiga 500 and this is going to give us one megabyte of chip RAM on the motherboard hopefully. So let's get started. This is the dead Amiga RAM board that I took out of the trapdoor of my A500. This had a leaking battery originally, which is why it's missing, and we dunked this into some vinegar, but uh, at the end of the day, if I plug it back into the Amiga 500, it still doesn't work. So if I take the RAM chips off it, there's a possibility that the RAM might still work in which case I can then add the RAM directly to the motherboard of the A500 and that will give us potentially a megabyte of chip RAM. So it's worth doing, it's worth a try. If it doesn't work, if the chips turn out to be faulty, then we've lost nothing really. So let's do it. Okay, so we've got three. Three is not going to get us anywhere, but because we need four, we can, however, test to see whether the three that we've got do actually work. Now, didn't you just put this back together, is what I hear you say, and the answer is yes, I did. Never let a good story come in the way of proper planning. So we're going to take it apart again immediately. I've just noticed the sticky tape is still over that. I might peel that off sometime. Okay, so six torque screws. Hey, the board is out. Now these chips will go into these holes here. I'm going to socket them, but this is just so that you can see where they go. The 20 pin RAM chips and 20 pin holes. Now, for the memory to work in these sockets, we need to change two jumpers. We need to change JP7A, and we need to change JP2. So what we have to do is basically put these chips into these sockets. Now I've got sockets to put in the holes and I've got capacitors to put into the little bypass um, place. Okay these are 0.33 microfarad so they'll go in there and then we have to set some jumpers. Now there are two jumpers that we need to set. First is JP2, that's that one there. And the second one is JP7A, which is that one there. JP2 controls chip or slow RAM. So this is basically it's three pads. And that one is connected to that one. And what we need to do is we need to cut that one and then solder that to that. And that sets this to be chip. The other one is JP7A and this is the expansion RAM enable. So that currently is, again, it's three pads and that one is joined to that and we need to cut that. And that basically says that the expansion RAM connected to the uh, trapdoor socket is not enabled. So that's what we need to do. 
and I shall start with the sockets. Now if this doesn't work we can just reverse these um, jumpers and go back to the way we were. Okay, these are nice turn pin sockets. So let's just try one of these and see which is the highest. No contest really. I'm going to need to bend the legs of these, I think. Okay, the sockets are in. Now it's time to add the capacitors. Each one will need its legs bent out for the wider hole spacing. Okay, so now we've cut the trace. So JP7A. We need to cut this trace here. Okay, that's cut. In JP2, which is this one, we need to cut the bottom and solder the top. So let's just check. The bottom is connected and the top is not. There we go. And that soldered the top. Okay, let's put some chips in and try it out. Now, only three of these chips will work because one of them has a missing leg. Entirely my fault. The downside of turned pin sockets is a much higher quality overall, but they are harder to get the chips to go into. Ah, but you say I've only got three working chips. Well, actually, I don't know if they are working, but fortunately, have no fear. I have some others, and these are almost certainly working chips.
so we've got one almost certainly good one and three we don't know whether they work or not let's plug it in and see what it does okay i've got my workbench disc switching it on that's a good that's a good sign in goes the workbench disc and that's a no still three six two one six eight but it's free so that did not work okay let us try all known good chips <laughs> Which disc is still in the drive. Eight seven seven zero four eight free memory. So yes, all these four work. So what we can do is take just one chip out. and replace it with one of these potentially faulty ones. That one works, so I can put a tick on that. Try the next one. It's not doing anything at all. Nope. I suspect that chip is dead. Let's try another one. Nothing again. Nothing again. That was actually quite straightforward. It was simply the fuse had gone in the power supply. It's a very old fuse. The fuse is probably 35 years old and it was quite a low value. It was, I think, 400 milliamps. So new fuse and it's fine. Right, this is the uh, known good chip. So let's go back to checking the possibly faulty ones. Okay, now you'll remember that we had one that was good. This is the second one. No, that is faulty. Put an X on that. And the third one. And that is also a good one. So we have two good chips and one faulty chip and one with a dead leg, which by definition must also be faulty because there's no way we're going to be able to use it. 
for the time being I'm going to assume that this is all coming in as chip RAM. I think I need to run sysinfo or some such similar thing in order to confirm that and I don't have it on a floppy at the moment. So I think we're going to have to take it on trust, at least for the time being, that these four chips have given us one meg of chip RAM. We certainly have one meg of RAM. 877168 memory, so that is one meg of RAM. Excellent. What I'm going to do now is put it back in its case. You don't really need to see, watch me do this. I shall click my fingers and it will be fixed. Sorry, not fixed, in its case. Reassembled even. Okay, there's just one little question of whether the RAM chips actually clear the keyboard. So I've mounted the PCB, you'll see. I have not put the um, bottom shield in. And the keyboard rests in there. Let me turn it round. The floppy drive is not secured yet. Hopefully you can see If you can see in there it does just by a smidge of a millimeter it does just clear. Okay, I shall continue reassembling. Right, here it is back together and assembled and switched on and working. You'll see we have 83776 bytes free memory. And one thing that I can do is on the extras disk, there is a utility in tools, I believe. Perfmon. And what this is going to do is tell us basically what is in the machine and how it's performing. And as you can see, there we go, it quite clearly says chip one meg. We've definitely got a one meg chip machine. Hurrah! Okay, that'll do. Like and subscribe, please. You know your duty. And I'll see you next time. See ya.